but I want to bring in, in the interim, the attorney representing Stormy Daniels, Clark Brewster. Clark, it's so good to have you with us. At the center of this is the question of whether or not this conversation happened about Stormy Daniels. What Michael Cohen says happened in this call is that um, Mr. Trump, as he puts it, he spoke to him about Stormy Daniels, the way it was wrapped up. Um, he said, based on the records that I reviewed and in light of everything going on, I believe I spoke to Mr. Trump about the Stormy Daniels matter, to which Blanche says, we are not asking for your belief. The jury does not want to hear what you think happened. There was, was an objection that, to that, by the way, which was, was sustained. Which was sustained, and we all know it's already there. <laughs> uh, and, and, he, and he rephrases it. He said, um, based on uh, what I believe, uh, I, I believe I was telling the truth. Is that as big a deal as maybe uh, some folks want to make it out to be? Uh, what do you make of that moment? Well, I, I would say that... Uh... Uh, there's been so many different conversations from uh, the fall of 16 leading to January of 17 that Cohen testified about in communications with uh, the president at the time, President Trump, and they're corroborated by just so many details. The fact that on this one occasion he might be wrong about whether he spoke with Trump or Schiller, I don't think is really a watershed moment. It might make a point for the cross. It looks like he's got caught in the crosshairs of some indecision or some uh, lack of memory or maybe an inconsistency of some type, but I don't really think that that makes the day. There's just so much corroborative evidence that they were having this communication and that the actions taken uh, to quiet Stormy Daniels was directly uh, you know, orchestrated by Trump. And I mean, he, he was a hands-on uh, you know, decision maker from my perspective, from what I've, I've seen. I was hearing in my head, uh, being in a, a store and clean up on aisle six, is there a cleanup that needs to happen here and, and how does it go? Well, I'll tell you that these prosecutors are very, very sharp. I, I worked with them pretty uh, uh, closely uh, with regard to Stormy and her her uh, witness appearance, and they're just very diligent. They're very careful. They're very thorough. Uh, I then would are imagine. you surprised that these seem to not have been seen by Michael Cohen before? This th these exchanges, these text messages. I, I think they probably were, but we're talking about. Uh, years of messaging back and forth, and uh, his phone was downloaded and given to the prosecution. I, I would imagine there's just a tremendous amount of documentation with regard to not only the phone records and the communications, the emails, and, and such that um, it might have been that day on that moment he didn't uh, recollect that particular communication. But I will tell you this pretty confidently that the prosecution won't, draw, won't miss any tricks here. They'll come back and and uh, put in the proper context for that cross. <clears throat> How's your client doing uh, after her testimony from last week? Well, I mean, she she has a great deal of fear about, you know, the unknown or what somebody might do. There's a lot of rhetoric out there. Um, and so she obviously is concerned about her well-being, but I think she's relieved that uh, she's off the stand and she was, uh, you know, thoroughly examined. And I think there's just a, a feeling of relief that that's behind her now. So I think that's a good thing. In the documentary uh, that was on Peacock, we often saw her at least several times following the news coverage of the story as it was developing. Is she following this trial now that she's no longer on the stand? Yeah, she's following it. I mean, I don't know if it's as closely as uh, some, uh, but uh, I, I stay in pretty close contact with her if she has a question or two, and she's been following it. She's well informed, and uh, yeah, she's been following it. I know there's attorney client privilege, but are these questions of law that she's asking you about because she has watched the trial? Well, you know, she hasn't really watched the trial, just the, uh, well, the obviously news. Well, the coverage of the trial, sorry. Yeah. No, they're, they're, they're mixed. I mean, uh, you know, as long as I've represented Stormy more than five years now, there's a, a relationship of trust and communication. We just don't talk about uh, just the trial. There's a number of things uh, in her life that she might want to discuss. So there's a mix. Right. <clears throat>